Hi everyone. Oh, don't Sorry. stick it in my face here, mate. Sorry, he's putting the camera too close. Hi everyone. I hope you have a had a great week. Um on a bit of an off foot at the moment because YouTube doesn't seem to want to stream this week's live stream, which is um really annoying and disappointing. We've spent the last 10 minutes fighting around with it and we've tried everything and it's not doing it I don't know what else to do so you've got us on Twitch and a few other platforms and we will do what we can to see if we can get it back and if we can't then it will have to be tried again next week but the video should still go up on YouTube even if it's not getting a live stream so sorry about that everyone um anyone in the chat that i can say hi to hi arty hearty life and hi fairy hedgehog nice to see you i hope you all have had a great week um i'm gonna start off like i always do with an item from my shop so an item of the week and i've chosen a cat trinket box which I put the towels going into a heart shape and they're cuddled up this was um, one of my earlier pieces that I've done a year or two ago but it's still very pretty and I like it a lot it's got a raised twist that helps secure the lid in place it's 25 pounds if you're interested it's in the Etsy shop that's written on the top corner right let's get this out of the way hi now I found a really awesome supplier on eBay and I shared a video of it I've got a lot of these crystal gems that I bought from them and I'm massively in love they're so sparkly very very happy with them if you want to see the full range I did a short video midweek that should be on YouTube and I've started making models with them so we have I know I love them my magpie instincts are just thrilled I made couple of Labradors with a red one and I made sure that I put a back to it because they've just got like a foil covered back that helps bring the sparkle out and I wanted to make the back look a bit better so I've clay covered I've done that with all of them so far and I've, that's what I'm going to do with them all and this is Cat and Her Kitten with a blue heart there towels are meeting above the heart and holding that in place so this week we're going to work on another one which is a poodle so I've done a light green heart yellow base I've already done the white poodle and I'm going to do a very dark grey instead of being black a lot of poodles are very dark grey and I think going that direction will mean that I can show the nose and eyes a bit better than if they were completely black. I know right my favourite has to be and I got this in some hearts it's like a rainbow clear and that is awesome and I can't wait to use I got about 10 11 or so in heart shapes like that and ovals but if you see the back's just a foil cover and that's important if it didn't have that I would use tin foil because the light 
then is able to reflect off far better than if you have a completely see-through glass uh, now am i pronouncing this right cabochon it yeah always always back your um glass things with a bit of foil before you mount them in clay it makes a real big difference Mm -hmm. right so i did the white poodle already because it's going to be it's more tricky working with white because it really does pick up dust so you're constantly washing your hands you won't want to see me running backwards and forwards washing my hands it's just not interesting so this is what i'm making the other poodle out of no it looks pretty much like black until I put black over it see what I mean and there's a fair bit of white actually in there it takes more white to start making a difference with Vimo black than what you would expect the other way around if you had mostly white and you were adding black even the smallest amount shows up immediately but it's not the same the other way around it can be surprising so I've out of this that much is black and that much is white mix so quite a bit mm. but it surprised me when I first started doing this I thought it would be the same both sides of the spectrum but it, it really isn't but yes I can imagine it is the same with paint as well right so because i'm working on quite a small scale i'm not going to bother with doing my normal foil middle body i'm just going to show you how to sculpt without the foil armature armature as i have explained is anything that goes inside something to give it structure more stability so what i'm doing is the clay you're going to take needs to be enough for the all the body back legs front legs towel neck so you you're going for a fair old lump normally i make the body and then add the limbs but i'm going to show you how to do it all out of one already got a bit of white on that the thing is even though it's just a small dot like that if you leave it on when you start to stretch the clay that will become a big white streak because the white stretches well all the colours stretch whatever you've got on it what's an and colour? that's intriguing even with blue and red, sometimes the blue is stronger, sometimes the red. It depends exactly which pigments are in. Yes, that makes sense. It does depend on the kind of pigments. Any <coughs> colour. Oh, any, yes. Okay, right. What you need to start shaping this into a body is you need something to be able to push a dent in. So, tool like this, which has got a flat line, the long edge of your ball tool anything like that because what you're going to do is you start out with like an overall more of a long sausage that's quite thick you're going to go to one side you're going to push in and divide that top bit into three but not three even bits the middle bit's going to be a little bit thinner so like that and that looks like quite a train wreck at the moment that's fine that's what you want it's it's all good now it gives you room to get your finger down that groove and start to work the bits that you've made stick out into little sticks and see how you can smooth out all those rough joints it's fine but if trying to get that groove with your finger otherwise 
you'll find that you it's hard to get that middle bit if that makes sense so what you're going to do is you're just going to squidge it and you can see it does bring a fold line making it into the round shape you want but you can just move that in it's fine and I'm doing this before I bring any shape to the body because trying to get the limbs brought out like this will misshape whatever shape you put in so it's going to be a waste of time doing it first and I'm not bringing them out to their <coughs> full length yet I'm just making sure I've got enough clay put to one side for what I want and it helps you be able to see if you've got like this limb's got more clay to it than that one so what I'm going to do is I push down the excess back into the body because you're going to round that up anyway see so get them looking roughly right smooth out that big crease just use your fingers rub it away and bring it back to the shape you want there we go like that so we've got one end done yeah let's take a sip of drink because I'm starting to sound croaky no same again for the other side so dig in with a tool or you can use the end of a tool like that anything that can make that line credit card a ruler just something to make the dip and again bring out the clay into the start of a limb and smooth out joints I'm at the bottom again bring it back up sorry there we go now we're getting there it's now starting to look kind of like the body of a four limbed um, animal but it's very flat that's okay we're gonna work on that just make sure you've got some sticking out now one side has more in the middle than the other it happens accidentally but that's what you want is one to have more than the other and the one that's got more clay in the middle that's going to be your neck and the smaller end is going to be your towel when to work the limbs out from the core and when to form them separately and attach them afterwards? Um, if you've got a armature, so a ball of foil in the middle, it's far harder to drag out clay because you've not got so much to work with because you've got a thin coat. Then it's easier to make limbs stick them on and then smooth in the joints. Um, sometimes the position that you've got the animal in it's easier to try and add on so when I did this cat because it's got I needed quite a round stomach and it brought up like that it was easier to do an add-on but you can see you get very very pronounced hip joints with it unless you really do a lot of smoothing in so it's it's an artistic decision really up to you so I thought if I show you them both ways because I've shown you how to add legs and just push them on I thought I'll show you this way around of doing it all in once so you've got the choice so we've now got a basic kind of roadkill looking body that can be used for pretty much most of the four limbed animals all look right with that basic stand um, again you can if you've got ones that are quite long and narrow you can start squeezing the middle and bringing it up you can add clay to the top if they've got quite a pronounced bum like a rabbit all sorts of things like that it, it, it does all you need is tire tracks across it and then you've got some roadkill but 
we're going for a poodle which is quite a skinny looking dog it's got some length to it as well so I'm going to bring the body up just a little bit so that it's a bit got a bit more length to it like that only a bit and then we're going to get these legs and we're going to bring them down by pushing where the hips would be like that I've got an air bubble when you wiggle your clay if you've had an air bubble in it it comes to the surface better to find out pop it and smooth it over at this stage then have a weak point in your clay so we've got back legs brought in already and I'm going to pinch round to give them a bit more of a top hip like that so you just pinch them round the very top just be kind of gentle you don't need to put a lot of force but just suggest some hips see then we're on the front legs and they come in and there's a crease line there just give it a, if you notice any bits that aren't smoothed out right just run your finger along them and it will fade in any join lines so we're now like that now the next bit I'm gonna do is I'm gonna round the back out and put a bit of a spine ridge in and how I like to do that is I sit it on its back legs upright even if that's not the end position it's just more stable to pinch along the back in that position supporting it just at the base of the neck but if you don't pinch out a spine along the back it looks kind of odd because either that's an animal that's really fat so it doesn't show or it's very very cartoon because people expect the backbone now having said that that's too sharp a line can you see it looks makes it look kind of starved so you just come over and you start to just tap that down just slightly and round it over a bit we'll get rid of all the fingerprints at the end once you've tapped the top so it's not such a sharp line it looks better see what I mean yeah crease line come here you it's easy to miss these things right make sure you've not distorted your hips too much by bringing your spine in there you go like that right now we're where we want to be so I'm then going to get this in a position that I want we've still got to put all the ruffles in and the actual paws in head and all that sort of stuff but I find it's easier to do that once you've got the main body in position now if you noticed I'm not doing it on the finished base because it's harder to remove especially if the base is raw clay like it is on this one oops don't squash his towel so I'm doing it on my glass board because it's easier to lift off once I've got it where I want it then I can bring it into place on the finished piece now this one I want to be laying down with his front paws out like that so I'm going to extend the legs a bit more because they are a lot longer than what I've done like that there we are so I'm going to do that like that that's the position I want bring the hips back in yeah now that means you can remove it and that's the position all done I'm not yet putting it in place because I'm going to do the fluff for round the ankles bring the towel up 
and I'm just twisting and pulling until it's at the length I want curving it round like that towels in place now let's do some fluffy bits so what we're gonna do is gonna make some rough balls I'm not gonna bother taking out any of those join lines just real rough balls because you're gonna put a lot of texture in that will make that look fine just make sure they're roughly the same now this seems to be a standard cut for most poodles they have like a floof ball around the wrist of each of the legs a top knot and fluffy ears so i'm trying to make this look correct for that so four balls roughly the same size gonna stick them at the end of the legs like that whoop let's bring you out a bit put the ball on there like that and the two front ones like that make sure they're firmly pushed on then I'm going to get a needle tool where's my needle tool gone <laughs> is what happens when you there it is too many tools easy to lose them and I'm literally going to support it and do little dots and little swells sorry up here so dots and little swells like that all over the balls so it's easier to do flat on the side I know it's harder to see let's do that you're just texturing it up to make it look floofy but yeah stab it a lot with your needle tool it's a good therapy and again you only have to do this on the sides that are showing so where the underside's going to be flat against the base there's no point wasting your time stippling that <clears throat> there we go that's two feet done that's next one. I will hold it up once I've done them all but I'd just be quick about it and just smush this up a bit the other thing I found when you start putting fur texture onto any of your models if you do it on the base you will get little bits come off I mean if you see there's bits already stuck to the pin tool there that can end up on your base so it looks scruffy better for it to come off and sit on your board where you can clear it up so can you see I've got all the feet now have a little stippled fur poof then we're going to put little feet on so we're going to roll smaller balls like that this time make sure all the join lines are gone let me take a sip of drink <clears throat> right um whilst i make these balls up i'm going to quickly tell you the library of congress in america has decided it's making a lot of very old children's books available to read online for to mark their 100 year um, children's book week and i had a look and there's some really amazing stuff like original beatrix potters and you get a picture of every page so you get the artwork you get the original coloring it's it's pretty impressive and they've got a whole huge list and it's all free to view so if you've got kids that might interest them it's worth having a look on their website so we've got four balls we're gonna just bring them out 
into tiny little ovals and then push them flat so that they're pore shaped see like that do that with the other four and then we're going to push them on to those fur dots right that one's a little bit curved so I'm just going to push that a bit flatter and bring it round so it's really really good the how easy it is if you make a mistake to correct it with polymer clay just refiddle and push it into the shape that you want I've just thrown together a new tool okay if, if you're having trouble doing zoom ins yeah zoom in with this oh just hold hold it and I'll change the scene my techie guy has just created a new tool from his phone if we have problems doing zoom ins he's just given me his phone that does this isn't that cool awesome awesome right i'm gonna give him that back but we shall be using that from now on honest i know i've said it to people before i don't know how anyone gets on in this world without my husband i couldn't function my business would be to put he is my support and my technical advisor and completely awesome if i do so so myself right Ooh, let's lift these up like this yes you did a very good job raising him fairy hedgehog i'm very very proud of you right so we've now got feet and the floof on so now we've got the feet on get your needle tool make sure it's not got any bits on it and we're going to just score in two lines to make it so that there's three toes like that very very little lines I might use your camera tool to show this off. Yeah. Right. I've got it in position. Ooh, looks like it's out of focus. Ooh that's right. weird. It's not working. Right on the it's right on there. Oh well, I'll show you on the top camera. I've scored in some little toes. We'll practice with it over the week. Now, at this point, I'm going to put it in place. And that's before I do the head or the tail. So what I want is a bit of a curve in it so that it sits round the back of the heart like this. Bring the front paws like that. Once I've got it where I want it, I'm going to push it down so that it's stuck right there we go one in place dog body yeah now i'm going to make a little poof <coughs> for the end of the towel remove the hair that this has decided to stick to it <sighs> one of these days i'm going to shave my headboard it it really is and it's amazing how quickly it comes together when you just do that divide trying to make it without splitting the ends the way i did is really difficult because your fingers are so thick trying to get make a furrow with thick fingers is really difficult so it's working again now, working again now. Yeah, I, I right what i'm going to do with this I'm going to stipple it and then place it and then finish it off because I don't want the towel to get squashed by me pushing too hard on it by making marks. But I don't know how I get along without your husband either. Oh, you can always borrow 
technical. Ooh, not the husband. I can't comment on the cuteness of the husband. Oh, the husband's very cute. Um, you can always borrow him for technical help. He's really, really patient. It's such a unusual trait that he's not one of these but you don't know everything kind of frustrated techie guys he expects you to know nothing and he will patiently explain it all to you right can you see i've done stippling on it like that and i've done them very deep so when i squidge them a bit pushing them in place that's going to be fine So I've pushed it in place, but it has lost some of its stipple. So yeah, let's bring this up so you can see like that. So I'm just going to go around and support it and just bring it back so it's still got its marks. But thank you. If you try and put these all on, before place um after you placed it you will switch that towel right i'm just going to show you where we're at with that can you see i've so you need to hold it very still. Whoop. it's still back a bit, is it, back a bit? is it not focusing no. it's hard to see let's see whether i can Bring the light on it a bit more. Yeah? No? Ish. Ish. I think we're going to have to work on this one. Yeah. And I'll just use the top camera. Might need to put it somewhere yeah, that's better. Can you see us? Stabbed it a lot and now it looks poofy. So, we have tail, body, legs, the whole bit done we're now working on the head now like I always do with my heads get a bit of florist wire it doesn't even need to be that thick of florist wire so whatever you've got I've got a thin one to hand you're gonna poke it down the neck in the center make sure you're not veering off to one side because you will break through and ruin your piece well ruin it for a minute because you can always push it back into place with your needle tool and smooth it back in then we're going to trim it with our cutters so that you've got about half a centimeter stuck out it really doesn't need to be a lot sticking out it's just to give some added support when it's um pushed on let's get that black out of the way right so we're on to the head get enough clay for the head size evil monkey spouse says i'm late sorry that's all right it was making me and my neighbors some chocolate strawberries so dem's in the fridge now what did I miss? chocolate strawberries oh my that sounds amazing that is an entirely reasonable excuse for being late you could have been completely late and not come i'm the only one that's um sweared to be here every week and i'm not even that because last week i was unwell that's so much, i've rolled into a ball then we're going to bring it out into a teardrop and quite a long one because this is the muzzle and poodles have quite a long muzzle now they also have a lot more top head the muzzle don't go all the way with a very slight forehead like you get with Labradors so thank you so you just take where you want the forehead to be and just bring it up and pinch along it like that so you've got that shape yeah that's what you're looking for that reminds me of a blazing saddle quote i hope you brought enough gum for everybody i love blazing saddles even to this day i watch it and see 
things that I completely missed and I've watched it a hundred times. Like the sheriff rides along on when he's coming to town on his horse. Look closely. The saddle's either Prada or Versace. It's yeah. Gucci, maybe. Gucci, that's it. It's a Gucci saddle. Lots and lots and lots of fine detail in that film. And it it's just so funny and wrong. Very wrong. Hugely, hugely not PC. But it was made back in a day when you could get away with that. Right. Out of the black, I'm going to be making the line for the muzzle. So the mouth, rather. Because dogs have a split from nose down to their the top of their mouth and then it curves round so they've got like almost like a couple of ball shapes and they have black lips that's reasonable see the thing is if i made chocolate strawberries out of one punnet the neighbors wouldn't be seeing them now you want to get the top line directly BJP cat, cat says hi Mel Brooks equals genius <laughs> yes it's true. it's true it really is right that black line is in the center and then I'm gonna bring it round so that it's making a little smile like that see let's come close so that's the top of the head that's the first lip in place now the other side we're not going to repeat that top line we're going to start just as it starts to curve round so you need a lot shorter for the other side and again you're going to have to eyeball it because it's really hard to measure this one but if you find that it's not the right size you can always take it back off and recut it down and I try to taper the end to a point because it looks better that way than it stopping just as a squared line again placing it sorry placing it you're going to be just at the tip of where it starts to curve and then you're going to bring it up so that it's a smile on the other side like that bit of fiddling around and there you there you have it smiley face yeah so that's your first bit of fiddle done oh that's amazing it's true you know but Evil Spaz Monkey has a lot of patience with baking. She actually makes meringues, which I think is crazy lunacy. I have, I consider myself a very good cook. I suck at meringues. Right, I'm getting a ball tool. I'm just going to make two little dents for the eyes to sit in. Like this. And then I'm going to place it at this stage where I want it on the dog. And I want the head to be turned right round, looking at the heart. Whoop. Make sure you've got it on your spike and how you want it. I'm going like that. Yeah? Back a bit. So we're. Cool. Very, very restrained of you. You're awesome. Right. Now, I'm going to get some more black. We're going to do two dots for the eyes. You can also use glass eyes. You can pre make eyeballs if you want to have some very intricate ones, but since i just did plain black dots for the white dog i'm going to do the same for the other for the black one that's why i went for dark 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 gray rather than black 
so that the mouth, eyes and nose all stand out. Now you need to try and first of all make sure your two eyes are the same size and that they're not too big for the skulls and you don't drop it straight on the back of your dog. Right, I've shown you some previous videos if you're gonna have a life clay in learn to roll to two balls at once it just saves you so much time it took me a week to learn it really isn't that hard right just gonna place them in and lightly tap them you don't want to smudge them because you'll end up with a flat surface which looks odd just lightly tap them in place like that then we're gonna go for a nose which is you start out with a ball and then you're going to roll it slightly flat between your fingers so that you end up with the, a little oval like that then we're going to get our needle tool and we're going to put two little nostrils in it like that whoop focus yeah and the reason for putting the nostrils in before you put the nose on is that you can then angle the nostrils downwards so you've got a bit more overhang like you would have with a dog nose and you want to put it at the front so that the space between the nostrils is directly in line with that line in the top lip make sure you pushed it on firmly enough that it's stuck but not so firmly that you're misshaping it so here we are dog with nose see the placement yeah so we're on the home stretch we're on ears and top knot now because I'm working with black and dark grey I'm going to make sure I get the black out of the way because it's so easy to accidentally use the wrong colour when they're very similar to each other so the ears come first because if you do the ears before the top knot then you haven't got a smooth in the ear joints just set, cuts out some work for you now they've got quite big ears so that looks about right for the clay amount but again you can always hold it against what you're working to see what you're aiming for bring that into a ball so you can measure get a better eye for the second one because again you don't want one bigger than the other the human brain really does love like symmetry <clears throat> What do we reckon? That looks a little bit off that one. There we go. And again, dual rolling out the balls to get rid of all those weird lines that you don't want. And you're going to bring it up into a teardrop, but quite a long one, and then squish it flat between your fingers. So you don't want to make it too thin. Can you see? roughly the thickness there the thinner you go the harder it is to actually handle and place your clay I know some people that work on very very thin veneers of things every time I've tried to do that I end up in a mess so I tend to not go any thinner than that with clay that I'm working on so like we did with the um, ruffles around the legs we're going to do get a needle and put little swirls and stab marks all over the top surface of those ears make sure you get down the sides as well and it's actually not a job that takes a huge amount of time because you are leaving patches where you're not swirling in so that it actually notices like that see how quick that was 
and you've got that sort of curly look so do that again for the other one Now I've not done the very top bit there because that's where we're going to push it down anyway so you'll flatten out any texture you put on there. Something to note with clay, when if you want to texture the whole piece you can do this, you texture what you can but you're going to end up with patches that you've um, got to hold it so you won't be able to do those bits because they will be switched because you're holding them so you bake what you've done and then you put on a fine layer of raw clay and then you can texture that in you can bake pieces as many times as you wish so if it's an intricate piece you might want to do it in stages and then bake and then add raw clay some people say add a very 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 thin coat of liquid polymer clay to it to make it so that it sticks better I've often found that it makes it slide around if that's the case you are probably adding too much when they say a thin coat they really mean a very very thin coat but I've found that I've not needed to a lot of the times just so long as you make sure you smudge it in properly now with the ears you want them to the side of the head so what I say is look for the outside line of the eye there that's where you're starting the ear just push it on and then you can if you want to shape it so put an ear up like that you can you will find that it wants to flop down though because it's raw clay but I have found you can get it to hold if you just fiddle around enough so that's what we're going to do with that so that's the ears in if I've noticed a patch that hasn't got any swirls that's going to notice so I'm just picking that back out again there we go right let's show you that so that ear is up and the other ear is down and back and let's show you it face on it looks like that so all we got now is the top notch okay so let's turn it and do a show like this Whoop. See? that triangle with three C's pretty much everything I make has that that's for Carly's creative clay it's my maker's mark so people can understand can't claim that they made it themselves unless they start sanding out the base of the clay so we've now got that top poof apparently i've been told by one of my friends who has a lot of poodles it's bigger than what you would expect when i first done it i did a small bit of clay like that so quite a thin little flat poof and apparently that's not enough you really gotta bulk it out into a big top bunch <clears throat> Now I find with this, I place it and then I stipple it because you've got to squidge a lot. There we go, like that. So just work your way around and like you did with the ears, just do some little swirlies and some stabs so that it looks floofy. But make sure you're not pushing too hard because it will flatten that neck out and you'll end up with an odd shaped dog so sometimes I'm pushing down and sometimes I'm going upwards just to try and redress any 
weird pressures that I put on. I'm just working my way around in a circle and the very last bit I'm going to do is the very top so I do all the sides because then I can hold it at the top. Yeah. Yep. There's no way better word to describe the poof on the top of a poodle head. <coughs> it is just serious floof. I suspect there's a bit of back combing involved, but I doubt I don't know. I've not owned a poodle, so I've not got into poodle grooming. But it's um definitely poofy. So I'm just going around the very top now and just doing some gentle stipples, stabs, whatever you want to call it, just to make the texture look like it's a ball of curly hair. There we are. Like that. Bring that back into position. <coughs> so we now have a finished poodle so let me show off what do you reckon one two done dogs and the green crystal peeking through there we go so he will get they will get baked and I will varnish these. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'll be using to varnish. Deco Art Dura Gloss. Anything with polyurethane written on is fine to varnish a polymer clay. Not all varnishes work. Some of them can react with the clay and make it go sticky. Um, I also use Ron Seal's um ultra tough gloss varnish but it's got a slight brown tinge to it so this one has less of a shine but it's crystal clear nope all of this is raw raw base raw white one i could have baked it up but i knew that the black was not going to interact with the white dog so I was okay to keep it raw um, if you've got a lot of fingerprints on your piece you can go over lightly stroke it and it will just rub out those fingerprints like that so and you get to pet your dog but you really don't need a lot of pressure in order to get rid of any fingerprints and it doesn't take long so already just from what I'm doing here I'll show you the difference it's made All right let's see can I bring that up close to the camera can you see all the fingerprints down the side around the face has all vanished just from a gentle stroke the other alternative is to bake it and sand it which is a whole lot more work than just taking the time just to gently stroke your work down once you've finished making it you can if you've got any sort of very tight places you can just use a ball tool but very 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 lightly barely touching and you've got to make sure you use one that has a wide enough head that you're not going to make a then an or a furrow in your clay so the widest one you can and it just rubs out your fingerprints the other option are these really fab rubber tipped smoothing tools but i've found when i've got them i've needed to glue take the top tip out and glue it back in but they can do the same thing smoothing out but yeah all finished really quick poodle for you all and that can be adapted into all the different breeds of dog you just can add so if it was a pug you're gonna have a 
much flatter face and you're going to do little waves of skin folds um, you can add chest ruffs by putting a V and then stippling that so for things like collie dogs you can use a pair of nail scissors and just trim along the surface of a rough just to make some little spikes like that and that works really good on collie dogs front um, yeah it's very very adaptable but it's the same basic process for all my dog making so i hope you like this and you have a really great week and i will see you all again next week okay right bye everyone